What's up everyone, BZS here and welcome to my channel which is all about music production, sound design, Ableton Live and all things related. And in today's video we're going to be talking about how to download and install Neural Amp Modular, which is one of the most famous recently free, that's important, amp emulators on the market at the moment. Is it easy to install? Is it easy to run? I'll walk you through everything and I'll be using Ableton Live as a DAW, so if you have this one as well, you're in the best spot. But if not, worry not. This uh, information will be useful for any other DAW as well. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into our computer and let's start downloading stuff. So in order to download the Neuro Amp Modeler, we need to go to their website, super simple. Of course, we're starting our installation on Mac, so let's go to neuroampmodeler.com and let's just go to play. Let's find the one link that is interesting for us. So here, play, snapshot plugin. The plugin behind NAM Revolution load and play snapshots models of a favorite gear. As a matter of fact, I'm installing this for the first time on my computer. I never used it before, so let's see how the installation will go. Will it be easy or not? I don't know. Let's, let's check that out. So seems super easy for now. Mac OS installer. Let's download that. Seems to be downloaded already 10 megabytes, not a lot. So let's just run it. Okay, it's a zip package. Let's just run the installer here. Uh, Apple could not verify it's free or malware that may harm your Mac or compromise your privacy. So it seems that I cannot be able to run it. Will I try to open it again anyway? Open? Not opened. Okay, why? What can I do about that? So that could end up being the shortest installation video ever. So far, not so good. Settings, privacy, security. Open anyway. Open anyway. Okay, so that was easy. I don't know if that was safe from my computer. Well, I guess we'll have to find out. Continue, continue. Agree. And what do we want to install? We have VST3, audio unit, uh, and standalone lab. Yeah, let's install everything. Continue. And then install. I need to type in my password. Installation was successful. Okay, so we have the Neural Amp Motor installed on my Mac, so let's try to launch it. Let's go here. Neural Amp Motor, okay. Now it's asking us to use microphone. Let's allow for do that. Another time, another time, and another time. And there we go. That's how it looks like. Looks okay, so let's try to see what's happening. I see some levels bouncing. They're probably from a microphone. Okay, let's hear that. Yes, exactly. This is my microphone. So let's just quickly check the inputs. Let's go to settings. What do we have here? It's using my MacBook Pro. We don't want that. So Scarlet Solo. Okay. Sampling grade 48. But I still can get to hear the guitar regardless of the input that I'll choose. Okay, that's unusual. It doesn't seem to be working perfectly here as a standalone app because the settings can't find my guitar audio signal. Maybe in your case it will be different, but worry not, we will not be using the standalone app anyway because we want to record it somehow into the computer. So we'll be using DAW. So now let's head over to my Windows computer just to install it there and then we'll be back here to further investigate. So let's install the Neuro Amp Modeler in Windows. So let's go to the website neuroampmodeler.com and let's go to the play button here. Just let's click this one. Okay, so let's download the Windows installer. It's only 3.5 megabytes, so it's very quick. So let's find it in a file explorer. Let's unzip it, so extra call, exactly where it is. Now let's run the Neural Amp Modeler installer. Run anyway, back to agreement, next. The reinstallation is as every other installation program, very simple. And what we need to install here, it's quite important, a so standalone application could be useful and also 64-bit VST plugin VST3. Next, next, install. And we don't need to view the readme file. So now it looked very simple. It was very simple. Now let's try to find it. We can either run it through the windows. So let's find it here. Neural Amp Modeler, will it run? Working fine, perfect. What you also need to do is to find it inside your DW. So in this case, Ableton Live Lite. So let's launch the Ableton Live Lite. So this neural amp motor would work obviously in any DW. Not necessarily has to be Ableton. It could be Bitwig, FL Studio. So let's find it here. 
uh, where we run the Ableton, it should automatically scan for plugins. So let's try if we found it. So let's go to the plugins. And then we have something like Steven Atkinson. There it is. And here it is, the Neural Amp Modeler. Okay, so let's try to drag it into the new audio track. And there we go. And it is installed and it should be working fine. So in some rare cases, you, let's say, go to your plugins and you won't be able to find any plugins here. It says no context. This is a quick way to how to fix it. So you go to the options, settings, and you look at the plugin tag. So what we have here is we see we're using the VST3 plugin custom folder, which seems to be a audio fake VST3. Obviously, there's no VST3s in this folder. So you might want to try to switch it off and use the VST3 plugin system folders. Let's click on that. And there we go. Our plugins are here. Also, some of the plugins come in the VST2 format, and in that case, we want to find our VST2 plugin folder. In this case, I'm using the same one so that we see program files, common files, VST3. This is the default VST3 plugin system folder. So use the custom one, and it's actually scanning the plugins straight away. If you can't see any plugins, you can try to rescan it. That should do the trick. And there we go, our plugin is here. We can run it again in a different track. Perfect, that's working fine. Okay, so let's go back to Mac and we will continue there. Okay, so here we are in Ableton Live and let's try to find the plugin. It should be here in Plugins under Steven Atkinson, which is a producer of the plugin. Let's quickly load it into our audio track and let's quickly set up the input. So in my case, in Focusrite Scarlet Solo would be input number two. Let's arm the recording. And there we go. We should be able to hear something. <laughs> Beautiful, sounds nice, perfect. The only little thing we need to talk about here is the Neural Amp Modeler is a super cool plugin, but on its own, it doesn't give you any sound. If we switch it off and on, the sound will be exactly the same. So we also have, of course, some uh, knobs here. So input, threshold, bass, middle, treble, obviously. Uh, but the only important part is here, or the most important part will be here, just to load your impulse responses. Where do we get these input responses from? So we need to download them from somewhere. And this somewhere will be one of the websites called tone3000.com. Here you can browse or you can search for your favorite amp. Let's quickly click in here just to see what is possible. And they're divided into a few categories. You can sort by gear, by tax, make some models. But what's most important is whether it's the full rig or impulse response or just the amp head capture. So in this case, we have a full rig of Fender Twin Reverb Blackface. Uh, let's try to download it. Seems to be one of the most popular, or maybe the other one here, 38,000 downloads. Let's click on this one. This is a full rig combo capture. It looks like that. And then let's just download it. Let's get NAM profiles. Let's download it here. We save it. We can unpack it and then we can load it into our neural amp modeler. So let's head on to the Ableton Live and let's find it here. So let's select model. We go to our downloaded profiles, which is here. And we have three different ones. Let's try the first one then. And does it change anything? Sounds nice without it. Okay, so yeah, of course, clearly, clearly we have some difference, we have some sounds, perfect. And let's try to find something more extreme. Let's go over to that website again, tone3000.com, and let's browse something by maybe Soldano. And here we are, let's get something that is full capture. So let's go to gear as a full rig combo. There it is, let's download this one. Let's head over here and let's find it. Let's listen to it now. Sounds extreme already without any other plugins, anything else. We have some, the threshold for the noise gate, we can just put it up a bit so we don't have this cable, guitar cable noise. So, okay, let's try to do it in a different way. Let's only download the amp head. So let's go to maybe this Mesa Boogie. Let's download this, just an amp head, but we will need a cabinet impulse response as well. So let's download it anyway. Let's unzip it quickly. Perfect. And let's go back again and let us find some impulse response. Impulse response, okay, perfect. Of which one actually? Modern, high gain, mix ready, impulse response. Let's try this if it works. I never tried that before. So we go back here. We did download the Mesa Boogie. Let's go here, metal, high gain. 
it's already very metal. Let's select impulse response, which be in the wave file, and we have it here. And it doesn't work. Do we need to set up something? It doesn't work. What do I do? I don't know. Without it, works without it. So it's not that intuitive. It doesn't work for some reason. Let's try to download different impulse response. Just the first one on the top. It seems to be mostly downloaded. Let's get this one. Let's find it inside Neural Amp Modeler. So it's going back and forth between website and between the Neural Amp Modeler. Try to load this one. Doesn't work for some reason. It works now, but without this, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, some of the impulse responses will just not work. I don't actually know exactly why, but the answer to that problem is just to find one that is actually working. So what I was able to find is if you go here to Tone 3000, I found this angle XXL 4x12, and this one seems to be working for some reason. Okay, so let's just quickly load it. Uh, load the random one. This one seems to be fine. Okay. Working fine. Sounds fine on its own and this plugin actually rocks. So yep. Now, what do you think? Was it easy? Was it not that easy? How do you think was the sound? Did it sound okay? Did it sound really bad? Just comment down below what you think about it. Please don't comment my uh, guitar skills, which are not the best. I'm fully aware of that. If you're thinking, are there any other free amp emulators on the market that are worth considering? Well, I happen to made a really extensive video about that, which you can watch clicking on this video here, just here. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. And well, see you guys next video. Cheers.